So the purpose of table topics is to help develop the skill of impromptu speaking, to be able to speak on your feet, on the fly, so to speak, to be able to uh, have an opportunity to, one of the goals uh, is for every person, every member, is to hopefully get an opportunity to speak, which I learned last week as I quickly rose my hand and spoke, even though I spoke, because I'm in this role today, I learned that typically you want to make sure you yield to the people who don't have a goal. So, Sorry about that last week, Zondra. I probably threw you for a loop when I said, I gotta say something. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your, I'm pretty new too, so thanks for your understanding. So uh, that's the main purpose, just to give everybody an opportunity to learn the impromptu ability to get up and speak like Sherry, or excuse me, Melissa's Sherry is today. So in keeping with the theme, uh, love is in the air, I did some digging and I came up with some questions and I found out that this role is more difficult than it sounds on the surface. It's tough to come up with good questions that uh, you know are really going to evoke the right kind of response without going too far into a, a zone you don't really want to go. <laughs> so with Valentine's Day being around the corner as we've been talking about, some say Valentine's Day has turned into a flower and candy day or a Hallmark day. So do you think on the whole we've missed the point in our society of Valentine's Day and why or why not? Glennon? I think in general we have not missed the point of Valentine's Day because people still resemble the, the big picture idea of uh, how and why we celebrate. Valentine's Day. One thing I'm, I'm, I want to say is that in this society we are unfortunately leaning towards the mater materialistic way of celebrating this Valentine's Day rather than celebrating the full meaning of it. People, I think pe some people are this um, with, with the passion and most people do just most of people celebrate this with passion and do lead towards the central theme of Valentine's Day. I'm just going to present the same question to Jennifer. Is that okay to do that? I, I, yeah. Okay. Please. Can you say the question again? Yes, let me repeat it. Some say Valentine's Day has turned into a flower and candy day, been reduced to that, or a Hallmark day. Um, do you think as a whole in society we've missed the point of Valentine's Day, and why or why not? I think we didn't miss the point of Valentine's Day. Um, I think any holidays uh, we need to use some kind of symbol to present the feelings of for that holiday. And cars and candies is the symbol for love. And sometimes we miss. We think we love is in the heart, but sometimes we need to present people with the things represent the love, uh, especially like like the marriage, has, like, I have married for 10 years almost, um, we never celebrate Valentine's Day after, after the marriage, you know, we get married, so we, I would like to have the candy or cards from my husband to show him his love, you know, which would, will make me feel that the Valentine's Day is for us too. Not the people, not the, those, those people not married. 
So I think it's it's good. Thank you. In, re in, in relationships, um, some people have the idea that the other person should just know that they love them. Does that hold true for you, and why or why not? And Farzan, would you speak to that? Well, relationships are really tough. No matter who the two people are, any time that you have two people that have to connect at an emotional level, it's really hard to figure out whether they are really connecting or not. And so expecting the other person to just know oftentimes leads to a lot more problems than anything else in my opinion. But I also am curious about this topic you had me speak on, which, which brings up a question about, related to the first one, about commercialization of this holiday, which is, at the risk of being sexist, we have a lot more women here in the room <laughs> than, than men, it seems to me like this holiday has become a expectation for the male to show his companion, the female, that he cares, that he remembers more so than the other way around. And so I think maybe there is some aspect of putting the burden on the man a lot more and the whole commercial aspect of it to show that affection and love was some kind of a tangible thing, which I agree with. I mean, it needs to be something, but whether or not it needs to be something that is important to the relationship and reminds the woman that the man cares, or vice versa, versus something that is expensive or, you know, really working it up and sending flowers and that kind of thing. So I'm rambling on a little bit, but that's my thought. <laughs> Thank you. I'll do what you did last week and say I have something to share. Um, <laughs> So Luis sent me a note and said, oh, it's so great that I'm going to be the Toastmaster for Valentine's Day because I'm getting married this year, so I must have the sweetest story of all. It must be such a romantic Valentine's Day for me. Um, when in fact, it's funny that I got an email from my fiance a couple of days ago, and he wanted to know, he forwarded me his reminder email from proflowers.com that Valentine's Day was coming, he forwarded me the email and said, can we save the $75 I would spend on the flowers for you and put it towards some wedding bills? So our plan is to get some sushi from Hagen's and eat by uh, candlelight at our living room table. So I think that, Jennifer, you were talking about making each other feel special. And for me, as an adult in a relationship, I am sort of shifting more towards recognizing my friends and my family who are important to me that I care about deeply and sort of giving them a small token on the day, a card, or I bought these little, from the dollar store, these little um, forget-me-not flower pots, right? So it's sort of a, an opportunity to share with the people that you love in your life, maybe not necessarily your spouse and the $75 commercialization piece, but just little ways that you can recognize people that you care about. That's okay. We are good until whenever you're ready. We have until 12:35 for evaluation, so you have as much time, or you can be. How about just one more question? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to give the opportunity to the guests to participate too. So I don't want to uh, call on you, but if one of you guests, after I read this question, would like to participate, if you could just raise your hand. If I don't see your hand, I'll pick somebody else. We don't want to press you, but we do want to give you an opportunity. So third question I have today is, what do you think are the most important and meaningful ways to show someone that you love them and why? What do you think are some of the most important and meaningful ways to show somebody you love them and why? Barb? Yes. There are really very many ways to show someone that you love them. Um, 
some of the most obvious are, are kissing, hugging. What's always mattered most to me in relationships is not so much the words and not so much the I love yous and kisses and hugs. Probably they matter less to me because I get so much of them. But what someone does, for me, love is an action. It's not a vocalization. And so I think the most powerful way probably is a combination